got your Bible and you want to turn to the book of James, second chapter. Book of James, second chapter. We'll start in verse 14. We're going to read through 26. When you get there, say amen. amen. Uh, if you need pew Bibles, we do have them up here. Anyone need a Bible? If you do, raise your hand. We'll be glad to bring you one. Are you there? All right. Let's read. James 
I'm reading from the um, English Standard Version. I believe it's where I took this. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to him, Go in peace and be warmed and filled, without giving him the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe in each other. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in that same way was also Rahab the prostitute justified by works. Let me, I didn't read that right. Let me start that again. And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. I've been reading for the last uh, several weeks uh, a book called God Has an App for That. And it's based, all of the lessons in the book are, are based on the book of James. James, if you've not studied that book, James has a lot of good life applicable uh, stuff. It's a good book to study. It's a good book to read. And I took a lot of the notes from this from that, uh, that book by Dudley Rutherford. <coughs> This particular section was titled in the book, Resuscitating a Dying Faith. As I said before, you know, what, we have to look at our faith. What kind of faith do we have? What, what, what do we do? Are we, are we parking lot Christians? I like this terminology. You know, do you, do you come to the parking lot on Sunday morning and pick up God, pick up your faith, where you left him last Sunday, bring him in for an hour or so, and put him back out there when you leave. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, a German theologian of note, said, The upshot of it all, that my only duty as a Christian is to leave the world for an hour or so on Sunday morning and go to church and be assured that all my sins are forgiven. I need no longer to follow Christ for cheap grace. That's free me. Jesus called himself the, or Jesus himself called us the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Jesus healed the sick. He spent time with the outcasts of society. He loved everyone, regardless of the way they treated him. And maybe back when you first accepted Christ as Lord of your life, if you have, I hope everyone here has this morning, when you first accepted him, you, you had that, that same kind of passion that we saw in Jesus to share with others to be, to, to embrace those that needed to know about Jesus but you know as we go sometimes we don't grow in our faith and our walk have you come to a place where God's love has become ordinary instead of extraordinary is your, is your honeymoon with Christ over? You know, we, we can apply that term. When something is new and something is fresh, is it time for new life, new vigor, new effervescence in your faith? Let's look at the word faith. 
my friend Kerry has taught me it's good to go back to the original texts and look at uh, the Greek and the Hebrew. Faith, as it's used in the context of James 2.14, is the Greek word pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. It says persuasion, that is credence, moral conviction of religious <coughs> truth, the truthfulness of God. Especially, I like this, especially reliance upon Christ, assurance, belief, fidelity. So the first question we need to ask ourselves if we're looking at our faith, and, and we, we maybe need to put a little new life in our faith, is what have we got faith in? What do we believe in? You know, you can put your faith in a rock. Good luck with that. You can put faith, we do put faith in a lot of things besides Christ. We get in an airplane. We have faith that that pilot knows how to fly that plane. We have faith that that plane's going to rise and ain't coming down until he gets ready to bring it down. But as Christians, <coughs> our faith should be based on our God, our Father God. And as Christians, we should have surrendered every aspect of life, of our lives, to Jesus. Every aspect. Every aspect. Do y'all find that as hard to do as I, as I do? It's hard to surrender everything because we, by nature, won't be good. James continues to say uh, in, in, in those verses to say that our faith without deeds is dead. Say in the words in that scripture we just read. Go, be warm, be filled. If you're cold and you're hungry, is that what you want to hear? No, you want somebody to give you something. You want somebody to give you a coat. There's a proper balance for our faith and our deeds working together. Our faith is proven when we put it into action, serving God and those around us. Jesus modeled that for us endlessly in the Scripture. And faith and deeds have to be accompanied by a reverent fear of God. And we talk about fearing God. Well, that fear is not, oh, that big man in the sky is going to get me. It's not the kind of fear we're talking about. We're talking about reverence. A fear of knowing that God is majestic. That he's the creator of everything about us. He's the reason that sun is shining. The reason there was a nice little breeze yesterday. We should have that holy respect for a holy God. And indeed, you know, we kind of get kind of get caught up in what does deeds mean, doing stuff. Well, we've all got skills. Janet's got a beautiful voice and plays well. Mm -hmm. Carrie is a good teacher, fantastic musician. Terry is just a good greeter kind of guy, just a good welcome people in. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to see you. He doesn't say that in any frivolous manner. I know when that comes out of Terry's mouth, it's coming out of Terry's heart. That's a skill. That's a deed. You know, we, we kind of think our deeds have got to be those uh, burning bush kind of things. Well, you know, Moses had that, and you and I probably aren't going to have one. Examine yourself. Find out, what can I do? How can I put my skills, whether you think they're big skills or little skills, they're the skills that God gave you. How can you put them into action to show glory, bring glory to Him, to help others? And you know, as we, as we do that stuff, we're not alone in that scripture passage. James gives us Two wonderful examples, Abraham and Rahab. 
Were they perfect people? Not hardly. Not hardly. But they had faith. They showed that faith. But we've got people around us who have faith, who show faith. People around us that are examples. <coughs> you need some help. You need a little coaching. You need somebody to stand beside you because you're a little, little, little afraid of what you feel like God's called you to do. I mean, you know that He's going to stand beside you, but you know, sometimes it's nice just to have another arm around your shoulder. There's people around us. So how do we revive our faith? Go to that uh, next slide. Next slide. Right there. How do we revive our faith? How do we breathe new life into it? First, faith begins with what we believe about God and His Word. <coughs> Who, what is our faith in? It should be in God. 100% in God. Realize that faith and action go hand in hand. Make sure we have a reverent fear for God. Again, it doesn't mean cowering over in the corner somewhere, but it means respect for God. Figure out what your gifts are. Use them to bless others. And then, like the, is it the Nike commercial? Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Are you going to mess up every now and then? Yeah. Are your, are your reaching out to other folks, is that always going to be received the way you'd like it to be received? That's okay. And remember, you're not a pioneer. You're not doing this for the first time. You're not the first one. There's folks who will help you. Kerry said in his prayer this morning, I love it the way God always just weaves things together. He spoke about faith. But then he quoted this verse, John 10, 10. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full in this particular translation, have it more abundantly. As that faith grows, as that faith is exercised, that abundant life grows more. That's all I got. Let's sing some more.